Hi everyone, as you guys know, I am pregnant. I have 74 days until we get to meet baby Apple and my cravings have been weird. Um, starting off with lemons, raw lemons, then going on to raw onions, then going on to chili oil, and now I'm up to craving hundreds and thousands. Uh, just the sensation of those like balls in between my teeth crunching away is sensational. And the other day I was doing my grocery shopping online and they didn't have any hundreds and thousands. So I had to order these Woolworths hundred and thousand biscuits, which were delicious. And I ate the whole entire packet in less than six to eight hours. But I actually, I left one, which I'm going to polish off the moment I finish recording this video. Now, if you guys had any weird cravings when you were pregnant, um, I would love to hear what they were. And I'd also love to hear whether you had a boy or a girl, because I don't know what I'm having. I didn't have any cravings at all with Rocco, but these ones are seriously like dominating my life and making me go crazy until I get them into my mouth. You guys have been asking me for a really long time now for my best financial advice, budget saving, money saving tips for when you are having a family. So I have put together this list for you of really helpful, valuable things that have actually really helped me in taking off the financial stress and pressure when it comes to having a baby. Now this list of advice is really valuable, but it's quite extensive. So I have covered it in two videos. So obviously there is this video, but tomorrow I'm going to be publishing a second video for you with even more tips and tricks. So make sure not only you subscribe to my channel, but also you've switched on that notification button so that you know the moment this video goes live because both videos have equally important helpful and valuable financial advice and money saving tips that are not only going to help take financial pressure and stress off your shoulders, but also your partners and your families as well. Let's not waste any time at all and get straight into this list because as we all know, mothers are busy people. Number one, scrap those lists. Do not go near Google and type in what do I need to buy if I have a baby. You will be overwhelmed with this long list of ridiculous things that you feel you must go and buy. You do not need a half or even three quarters of those things on those ridiculous lists. What I recommend you do is you go and speak to a frugal mum and ask her, what are the basics? What are the things I must buy? And what are the things just to avoid and the trap of buying? Now, if you don't know any frugal mums, it's okay. I've also got that covered. If you go through my Instagram account, the sugar mama at TV one, you will see I am following the most amazing group of frugal mums around the world. And they very kindly and generously share all their tips and tricks as to what they're buying and how they're saving money from where they are shopping to what they're doing to extend the life of their products to hustling up extra money to saving money. It's incredible. So I will make sure I list my top five favorite ones in the video description box below, but have a look at just the basics as to what you need to buy. For example, I know that I do not need to go and buy a change table. My desk that will be sitting next to baby Apple's um, bed is perfectly fine for changing nappies once I put down a change mat. Also, I don't need to go out and buy a nappy bin. I have a perfectly large bin sitting outside the front of my house. I do not need to waste valuable money or space in my home. The second tip is to buy secondhand. Not only is this going to save you so much money, but it is also going to save the environment as well. If you jump online groups such as your local Facebook buy, sell, swap groups, eBay, Gumtree or Craigslist, depending on where you are in the world, there is so much baby stuff, half of which is actually unused for sale, and you can pick it up at a fraction of the price. Now, I have actually bought a Snuzz co-sleeping bed because when Rocco was a baby, he had horrendous reflux and this Snuzz bed actually allows you to elevate the bed if the baby, if this baby has reflux like Rocco did. And also we are a massive co-sleeping family. But when it comes to buying the bed, I will definitely not be going and buying a cot online because they can be incredibly expensive. I'm going to be picking up 
one of those IKEA beds for less than $100 through Gumtree and I'll be picking it up locally. I will save myself hundreds of dollars. You do not need to buy everything brand new. That is absolutely ridiculous and also disrespectful to the environment. My third financial tip is actually around fashion. Now, fortunately, I haven't had to buy too many clothes um, since falling pregnant. And the reason why, or well, my secret tip is, it's called a belly band. The tip is to buy them quite long. So I have been able to wear all my normal pants and what I simply do is just put this over the top. So yes, I'm walking around with my jeans completely unzipped, but no one has any clue whatsoever because I slide this over the top. Now, this is actually incredibly comfortable to wear. It's soft and it's lycra and stretchy, so it's actually gotten me through all the way and I'm sure it will keep me going all the way to the very end because I actually use this exact one with Rocco as well. But it also keeps my belly nice and warm and toasty. But I haven't had to buy any maternity jeans, pants or skirts. It's been fantastic. Tip number four is to budget. If you've never done a budget or haven't done an updated one for a really long time, now is the time to do this. You need to sit down with your credit card statement and your bank statements so that you can see what all your individual living expenses for both you and your partner and all the other family members are. Now, the reason why I recommend you cross-reference it against your bank account statements and your credit card is so that you do not miss anything at all. You know exactly how much things cost, but you can also quickly see how much all these things add up. Now, once you have done this, you then need to go and do a new budget or an updated budget, factoring in all the new costs and expenses of having this new family member. So you'll need to look at your grocery bills and factor in the costs of nappies, factor in the costs of formula if you're not breastfeeding. You'll also need to call up your private health insurance company and find out how much your private health insurance is going to go up per month with the additional family member. Once you've done that, you then can go back through your budget and work out how it's all gonna fit in. You may need to go back and either remove or reduce some of those expenses to be able to afford the new expenses from that family member. Now, I highly, highly recommend that you do this with your partner, so that your partner is on the same page as you and is equally informed as to what the total cost of living is for the family. Now, this is the best time to also have that really important upfront conversation around maternity leave understanding how much time you want to take off, how much time you can afford to take off. Now, we also need to consider what is the cost of childcare, whether you want to return back to work part-time or full-time and when. You also need to go back to that budget and see how you're gonna be able to juggle it all without financial stress and pressure and work together as a team so that you make the decision together as to what is best for you as the mother, but also as the family unit. Tip number five is to buy things slow and steady. Now, by doing this, it enables you to pick up things when you see that they're on special, such as nappies. Also, there might be some really nice clothes that you see that'll be cute for a baby. You might wanna pick them up when they go on sale. But by buying things slow and steady and even potentially buying them in bulk to save money, it will mean that you are really enjoying the nesting process, but you also have a sense of being organized and in control and prepared for your baby's arrival. Tip number six is to buy multi-purpose items or items that will grow for as long as possible with your baby. For example, some cribs as beautiful and as precious as they are will only last a couple of months before your baby outgrows them, meaning you've got to go out and buy a whole new crib or cot or whatever it might be. So try and buy things that will actually factor in the growth of your baby that goes for as long as possible. Now, I have my eye on a yo-yo pram. Now, and Rocco actually had a yo-yo pram, but they've recently upgraded this. And if anyone has one of these, please let me know, because I'd love to know what you think before I go and get one. But the yo-yo pram is really light and easy. It doesn't take up too much space, which is great because my home is quite small. But it allows you to go from a car seat 
to a um, bassinet style pram to a normal pram that would suit a six month year old up until like a four year old. Now, as I said, Rocco actually had a yo-yo pram, but unfortunately it got stolen, but it is so good because you can actually take it on planes. It's really light and it collapses into this really small size, which is perfect for putting in the car, especially when I've got the dogs in the boot as well. So think about items that are gonna last a really long time, or if you're going to invest in something expensive, make sure that you're going to be able to keep it in case you're going to have more children or you can sell something at a good price on the second hand economy tip number seven is to use cash back shopping programs when it comes to potentially buying this yo-yo pram i'll be making sure that i do buy it online through my cash rewards membership so that i'm getting some money back on my own baby shopping and not only will this include like big ticket items such as car seats and prams but it's also going to include my basics so my weekly grocery shopping at woolworths where i need to buy a whole pile of nappies now this cash back really does add up since starting my membership program I've saved at least, a, well, gotten back at least $160 so far, which will all go towards round four of the $1,000 project. And they actually have some great businesses registered with cash rewards, such as Cotton On, obviously the staples like David Jones and Myers, but they also have some baby shops that specialize on the cash rewards website with fantastic cash reward back programs and offers available to you. Now, don't forget tomorrow I'm publishing the second half of this video, but if you are about to have a baby or you've had a baby, I also should let you know in my next book, Mindful Money, there is a whole chapter dedicated to children and money, in particular, investing for your children and how to help set them up for long-term financial security and independence. So I have also linked that in the video description box below so that you can order yourself a copy and enjoy reading it because it will not only make a huge difference to your own financial situation, but also to your children's financial education. I said, if you are experiencing any weird cravings or experienced weird cravings when you had a baby, please let me know what it was and what did you end up having because I have no idea anymore I thought I was having a boy it felt like a boy but I'm just I don't know what I'm having up but yeah, I'd love to hear from you and of course remember don't forget the next video is coming up tomorrow so switch on that notification button or bell see you then ciao